The history of humanity has been marked by moments that define and change the course of entire nations. Sometimes these moments are the result of extreme acts committed by solitary individuals, moved by their own convictions and beliefs. At the heart of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, a tragic event shocked the world and halted what many saw as a step towards peace. The assassination of Yitzhak Rabin, a leader in search of conciliation, at the hands of a man who considered that this path was a betrayal. This man was Yigal Amir. But who was he really? What led him to interrupt a long-awaited peace process and commit one of the most shocking crimes in Israel's modern history? Welcome to La Criminotica. In today's episode, we'll delve into the life and motivations of Yigal Amir, the assassin of Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, and try to understand the complex webs of politics, religion, and personal convictions that led to this fatal outcome. We start. Classification, Killer. Features, Assassination. Number of Victims, 1. Date of Crime, November 4, 1995. Date of Arrest, November 4, 1995. Date of Birth, May 23, 1970. Victim, Israeli Prime Minister Isaac Rabin. Method of Crime, Firearm. Location, Tel Aviv, Israel. Status, Sentenced to Life in Prison on March 27, 1996. Life Sentence for Rabin's Assassin. March 28, 1996. Jewish extremist Yigal Amir was sentenced yesterday by a Tel Aviv district court to life in prison, plus an additional six years in prison, for the assassination of Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, with which he will have to serve the sentence without the possibility of a pardon. The state of Israel is a monstrosity, shouted Amir, a defender of a theocratic state, as police led him out of the courtroom. He does not deserve compassion, because he lost all semblance of humanity, said the chief magistrate of the three-judge court, Edmund Levy, announcing the unanimously adopted sentence. Rejecting the claim that the religious fanatic only wanted to cripple the statesman to stall the peace process with the Palestinians, Levy said Amir had acted, with premeditation and surprising composure, in assassinating Rabin. Amir has 45 days to appeal the sentence in the Supreme Court. Criticism of Perez Prime Minister Shimon Perez, Rabin's successor, described the sentence as, pale, compared to the crime, but acknowledged that it could not be harsher, since the death penalty is reserved in Israel for Nazi criminals. Yigal Amir violated all the principles on which this state and the Jewish religion are built, from the Ten Commandments to Israeli law, Perez told reporters. The murderer is now incarcerated in a high-security gallery of the Beersheba prison, in the south of the country. This carrion is going to rot in prison until the end of his days, peace will be Rabin's true revenge, said the Prime Minister's former Chief of Staff, Aiden Haber. The widow, Leah Rabin, described as, absurd, the fact that the convicted person was tried by an ordinary court. I don't understand how it took five months to try a man caught in flagrante delicto and who immediately confessed to his crime, she said. The image of the murderer is erased, but I have not come out of the nightmare, she added. I did it for Israel. Yigal Amir killed Rabin with two bullets on November 4, at the end of a pro-peace demonstration in Tel Aviv. In the attack, a third bullet wounded his bodyguard, Yoram Rubin. In his plea, Amir claimed responsibility for the murder yesterday. I had no choice but to carry out this act, which is against my personality, because of the peace policy towards the Palestinians, Amir said. I didn't do it for my personal advantage. Quite the contrary, me and my family have suffered a lot. Everything I have done, I have done for the people of Israel, for the Torah, Bible, of Israel, for the land of Israel, Amir said in a statement released after the sentencing. The murderer, who yawned several times upon hearing the verdict, estimated that the judges had avoided the real debate. It was not a simple debate about a murder, 
but about the very essence of Judaism and the difference between the state of Israel and a democratic state, he said. Premeditation Judge Levy replied that, the attempt to give a religious foundation, to the crime, is a cynical exploitation of Jewish religious law. The defendant acted after long reflection, premeditation and cold blood, considering that the death of the Prime Minister was the best way to stop the peace process, he considered. Judge Levy considered that Israel should reflect on its educational system and the way in which the murderer could have come to believe that his act was legitimate, according to Jewish law. The process, opened on December 19, never addressed the issue of incitement to which Amir was able to respond by ultranationalist rabbis, nor did it evoke the terrible failures of the Prime Minister's escort system. The official commission of inquiry that analyzed these issues will present its report today, Thursday. A criminal who overshadowed everything. March 28, 1996. Until the last day, as if he wanted to feed public opinion, Egal Amir always entered the courtroom smiling and chewing gum. That's how he said goodbye yesterday, as if he were an incandescent god. When contemplating the mess he made with his pistol less than five months ago when assassinating Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, it is legitimate to wonder if, and with this crime, even perversion, is not true that, he who laughs last laughs best. On a cot in the Beersheba prison, which he enters at the age of 25 to stay for the rest of his life, he will continue to believe that the assassination will result in victory. The point-blank bullets he fired at Rabin did not stop the fragile peace process between Israel and the Palestinians, but in the manner of an Olympic goal they can do so by tipping the scales in the May 29 elections. Through a paradox of violence, what Amir was after that November night in Tel Aviv was achieved by his Islamic allies, who also play like him in the theater of horror, the Palestinian suicide bombers who blew themselves up a month ago on buses and in the streets of Israel. In addition to the victims, those who now pay the piper for Allah's terrorists are more than two million Palestinians besieged by Israeli Prime Minister Shimon Peres. Eight out of every working-class family in Gaza is out of work, the majority because those who earn their bread in Israel are now barred from entering the country. What Amir was not proposing was the advancement of the elections in Israel. What those who dispatched the Muslim suicide bombers a month ago perhaps planned was for Perez to lose them. This would stop the peace process, and with Perez, Arafat, his partner at this crossroads, would also lose. The elections on May 29 will be a dispute between Perez Labour Party and the right wing of the national camp, in whose broth Eagle Amir was cultivated. In the name of democracy, Benjamin Netanyahu, the leader of the Israeli right, the main adversary of Perez and Arafat in the May elections, condemned Amir. But if he succeeds in the polls, he will probably do what the smiling Amir dreams of in his prison. The Secret Wedding of Yigal Amir, the Assassin of Isaac Rabin. September 7, 2004. Jerusalem. Isaac Rabin has been removed this weekend in his grave. Nor is his wife Leah resting in peace these days. Yigal Amir, assassin on November 4, 1995 of the then Prime Minister of Israel and Jewish Apostle of Peace, has gotten away with it and has managed to marry, circumventing all prohibitions and censorship in this regard, with his girlfriend from All the Life, Larissa Trimbler. The secret wedding, by proxy, held two long weeks ago at the Amir home, became known this past weekend. The news has caused an information earthquake in an Israel that does not forget or forgive the assassination. Many believe that the murder of a Jew to another Jew marked the beginning of the end of the so-called peace process. Be that as it may, the wedding will bring a cue. The Amir family prepared the event with great care. He did not leave any detail to improvisation. Everything was developed according to the Jewish tradition, as stipulated in the Halacha, the Jewish law on this matter. It should be remembered that Israeli legislation is subject to religious law since there are no civil marriages in Israel. They are not allowed. Shlomo Amir, father of Rabin's assassin, 
visited his son in prison. This one, sentenced to life imprisonment, named her his representative at the ceremony and gave her a ring to seal the link. That's how it went. Days later, at the Emir's home, Larissa Trimbabler and Yeagle were married by proxy, in the presence of two male witnesses, as required by the canons of the Jewish religion. Shlomo blessed his daughter-in-law, who was blessed in turn by the witnesses and the rest of the family. Larissa dressed in her best clothes. Jula, Yeagle's mother, shed her particular tears. The family even obtained the indirect blessing of the rabbi of Benei Brak, Nesim Karolitz, who has denied having attended the ceremony but has acknowledged having confirmed the religious validity of the wedding by proxy, something that Jewish law accepts even if it only occurs in extraordinary occasions. We are healthy people. We have married respecting the letter of the Jewish law. No one can say that this wedding is not legal. Nobody. Yigal and I are mature people, healthy people, and there is nothing and no one that can prevent our marriage. What's more, now I want a child of yours. Larissa's words may be spoken louder but not clearer. Israeli public opinion knows this and regrets it. Although Yigal is prohibited from meeting Larissa in jail for security reasons, both are prepared to bring a child into the world through artificial insemination. More than ever, Jula and Shlomo deserve the opportunity to have a grandchild by Yigal, said a close friend of the couple. Tomorrow the Supreme Court must rule on the matter, its decision will allow or not the controversial couple to consummate their marriage. Shmuel Kasper, Amir's lawyer, is not too optimistic but he is very clear, no matter what the Supreme Court sentences, Yigal and Larissa will remain married. The wedding has been especially bad for the Israeli prison authorities, in charge of monitoring Rabin's assassin 24 hours a day. To heal in health, they assure that the ceremony is illegal for not responding to Jewish law in all its conditions. His complaint, on deaf ears. On the other hand, labor deputies, such as Eitan Cable, have accused these prison officials of negligence, for not preventing a link that has shaken so many consciences in Israeli society. Cable once proposed the enactment of a law in the Knesset outright prohibiting Amir from marrying. It didn't make the cut. And Larissa and Yigal have married. Now, to the ridicule of almost everyone, to their own shame and that of others, they pretend to eat partridges and be happy. Isaac and Leah will soon stop turning in their graves. Circumcision Behind Bars November 1, 2007 Larissa Trimbabler gave birth on October 28, five days after the 12th anniversary of the assassination of former Israeli Prime Minister Isaac Rabin, according to the Jewish calendar. The baby's father, the Jew Yigal Amir, a confessed and proud murderer, is serving a life sentence. He is not the only one who boasts of the three shots that killed the leader. Around the criminal, the most fanatical and fundamentalist right in Israel, the one that opposes giving up an inch of the occupied Palestinian territories, has been raging for months in its campaign for Amir to be released. They take advantage of any loophole. Now it's time for the little boy's circumcision, it will take place in the Rymanim prison. A Tel Aviv judge, Avi Garfinkel, yesterday opted for this option. Others had been raised, the temporary release of the inmate so that he could attend the ceremony, or the installation of a screen in his cell so that he could see it live, ridiculous alternative, in the magistrate's opinion. But the idea that the prisoner would leave the prison for a few hours aroused the firm rejection of a government that is not willing to get involved in eggplants and that, nevertheless, treats Jewish fundamentalists with a kid glove. Yigal and divorcee Larissa got married when he was already in the shade. Hard was the legal battle to allow them to have sex. They obtained judicial authorization for artificial insemination. They must have been in a hurry because Trimbabler was caught while she was trying to get a bag of her husband's semen out of jail. Finally, a judge authorized the vis a viscount. Once the pregnancy has been achieved, the provocation campaign, 
which drives several ministers crazy, especially labor, and a good part of the Israelis, does not abate. What location did the family initially propose for the act of circumcision? The tomb of the patriarchs in Hebron. It's not free. The emirs know that in that Palestinian city they would have the support of hundreds of settlers, whose protection has turned a third of the city into a ghostly place. Thousands of Palestinian shops and houses were emptied almost seven years ago so that Jewish extremists could move calmly between the four small settlements in which half a thousand settlers reside. Finally, they will celebrate it in the privacy of the jail. But the couple does not stitch without thread. What date have you chosen for the ceremony? November 4th, anniversary of the assassination of Isaac Rabin in the Gregorian calendar. Around the adventures of Amir and his wife, almost anything goes. As soon as the baby was born, Larissa Trimbabler's lawyer, Samuel Casper, tried to sell the photographs of the child obtained with his mobile phone at the gates of the Biker Hallam Hospital in Jerusalem. I will only do it with the consent of the mother, the lawyer specified. Amir shows no remorse for a crime that has traumatized a country almost as much as the wars he has waged against its Arab neighbors. Just like on November 4, 1995, when, after learning of Rabin's death during the interrogation to which he was subjected, he asked the policeman to join in a toast. Now we need to know the name of the little one. The marriage has announced that it will bear a biblical name. Given the perpetually provocative attitude of Yigal, Larissa, and those close to her, it wouldn't be surprising if his name was Isaac. Rabin's assassin divides Jews. November 4, 2007 On the same day that marked 12 years since he assassinated Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, Yigal Amir participated yesterday in the circumcision ceremony of his first son at Rimanim Prison in central Israel. One of the boy's names is Shalom, which in Hebrew means peace, and which has been given to the newborn at the express wish of Amir, whose paternal grandfather was called that. The child's name is ironic considering that Amir committed the murder so that Rabin would not sign peace with the Palestinians. The anniversary of the murder and the special treatment the executioner receives from the authorities threaten to divide Jewish society. Dozens of protesters from the left and the right gathered yesterday at the prison gates, shouting, insulting and shouting at each other, criticizing or defending Amir. Other than this, no incidents were reported. Criticism of the judicial system The ceremony took place in the strictest privacy. Only about 15 people, direct relatives of Yigal Amir, in addition to the rabbi, were able to gain access to the prison. They all gathered in a room and after 10 minutes the murderer entered. The boy was quickly circumcised and Amir returned to his cell. The prison authorities prohibited Amir's relatives from bringing in video cameras and mobile phones to prevent the ceremony from being filmed. The boy's mother, Dr. Larissa Trimbabler, divorced her former husband in order to marry Amir, whom she had hardly known before the marriage. The child was fathered by artificial insemination. Yuval Rabin, son of the late Prime Minister, delivered a heartfelt address to the 150,000 people who gathered in Tel Aviv to remember the assassination on Saturday night and was very harsh on the Israeli judicial system. Yuval denounced the shaky and weak wall of silence of a law that allows Yigal Amir to celebrate in style the circumcision of his son on the anniversary of his father's murder. The man who 12 years ago walked through this very square and knowingly appropriated the role of judge and prosecutor, the man who abused the laws of democracy continues to mock them today, Yuval said. Some commentators have noted with concern that virtually all of those who attended the Tel Aviv rally were Ashkenazi Jews, that is, from Europe. This indicates that there is a deep gap in Israeli society between Ashkenazis and the so-called Eastern Jews, that is, those from Arab countries. In recent days, criticism of the Israeli judicial system has multiplied for allowing Amir's prison celebration, but the judges say they have had no choice but to authorize the circumcision on the anniversary of the assassination. 
Yigal Amir, now 37, was born into a religious family of Yemeni origin, studied at a rabbinical school, joined the army and enrolled in university, where he associated with extremist students who opposed the peace process. With the Palestinians The anger of Rabin's daughter Dahlia Rabin, daughter of a former prime minister, has denounced that the rabbis of the Talmudic schools who authorized the murder are still at large doing their own thing and the government has not taken any measure to silence them. Dahlia was referring to Barilan University, a center near Tel Aviv where Yigal Amir studied and planned the assassination. Little has changed in this orthodox university for 12 years, although now the management of the center prohibits all kinds of political meetings. Israel commemorates 120th anniversary of Rabin assassination. November 4, 2007 Israel commemorated this Wednesday the 12th anniversary of the assassination of Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin against the background of the campaign of the extreme right in favor of the release of his murderer that arouses the outrage of the country. On November 4, 1995, Yigal Amir, an Orthodox Jew from the Israeli extreme right, shot Rabin three times in the back in Tel Aviv, with the aim of derailing the 1993 Oslo-Israeli-Palestinian peace accords. The 12th anniversary of the crime is this Wednesday, according to the Hebrew lunar calendar. That assassination, committed during a large peace demonstration, plunged Israel into a stupor and provided a stab at a possible solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. He was next to Rabin, his face was radiant when he saw the demonstration of support. But the ruthless enemy was coldly waiting for him with a loaded pistol in his hand, Israeli President Shimon Peres recalled Tuesday night. The assassin shot him in the back but hit the nation in the heart. History and the people will never forgive that ignominy, added Peres, thus denying any possible measure of grace for Yigal Amir. The official ceremony began at 3 p.m. local time, 1 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, at the Mount Herzl Cemetery in Jerusalem, where Rabin's tomb is located. Perez and Prime Minister Ehud Olmert will participate in the event. Next, the Knesset, Parliament, will dedicate an extraordinary session to the anniversary, which this year is commemorated amid the controversy unleashed by the far-right campaign to achieve the release of Amir. The ultra-Orthodox have planned to organize a counter-commemoration in Tel Aviv to reveal the true face of Rabin, Caddy Cohen, one of its organizers, told AFP. Yigal Amir, 37, is serving a life sentence and has never expressed remorse for Rabin's murder. In a video of which 150,000 copies were recently released, the killer's mother claims his action was fated because of his name, Yigal, which means savior in Hebrew. I decided to kill him to neutralize him politically. I don't regret anything, Amir declared in an interrogation carried out hours after committing the crime and made public on Monday by the police. The assassin added that he could have killed Perez as well, but he was only a secondary target for him. The Israeli press reported last week about a tightening of the Israeli president's security due to a violent smear campaign against him on Israeli ultranationalist websites. Yigal Amir, for his part, got married in jail in 2004. His wife, Larissa Trimbler, a 42-year-old divorcee and already a mother of four, is currently pregnant. For her part, Dahlia Rabin, Rabin's daughter, lamented on Tuesday that Amir had not been executed. Yitzhak Rabin, chief of the Israeli general staff during the Six-Day War in which Israel conquered the West Bank and the Gaza Strip in 1967, received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1994 together with his then foreign minister Shimon Peres, and the Palestinian leader, Yasser Arafat, for the signing of the Oslo Accords. Conclusion Today, August 10, 2023, more than 27 years have passed since the assassination of Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, and the impact of that act still reverberates in the collective memory of Israel and the world. This tragic event serves as a stark reminder of the devastating consequences that can result from extreme ideologies and how a single hate-driven act can alter the course of history. 
Almost three decades later, the echo of that shot continues to echo in the corners of the nation, evidencing the division between those who see Raven as a brave pacifist and those who, in some way, try to justify or exalt his murderer. The intensity of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and the fragility of peace efforts, are clearly reflected in the reaction to the assassination and in the events that followed. As we move into the future, it is imperative that the lessons learned from the past guide the steps of Israel and neighboring nations. Rabin's legacy, his efforts for peace and understanding, should serve as a beacon in this continuing search. The hope is that the next generations, looking back on this period, will not only reflect on pain and sacrifice, but will be inspired to forge a path where unity and peace prevail over discord and discontent. From La Criminotica, we want to thank you for joining us on this journey through the recesses of history and collective memory. These stories, although often difficult to listen to, are essential to understand the complexity of the world in which we live and the decisions that have shaped our present. If you found it interesting, don't forget to like, subscribe and share with whoever you think this story could resonate with. We hope to see you soon in our next episode. Until then, take care and keep digging into the stories that make us who we are. Until next time.